Thank you. Okay. Welcome everyone to tonight's uh, ZBA meeting, Town Tilton, for um, August 19th, 2013. Um, for those of you who may not know me, I'm uh, Chairman Robert Brown. To my left is uh, Vice Chairman Joe Fluster. To his left we have uh, full member Marina Sumner. And to my right, full member Kathy Gill. Um, we do have one full member missing this evening. So, before we proceed, I would like to get um, the opinion from our first advocate, be Mr. Cropsey. See if you accept, uh, we accept our four, four, four member board tonight. Um, so we're going to need three, three votes that you will approve. Pardon me. Um, in the event of a tie, there's uh, some difficulty, but if the, if the chairman's not voting, then uh, there wouldn't be a tie. Um, and uh, you, meet, you do meet the, the quorum, the minimum quorum, Certainly. so I'll, yep. I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. Okay, thank you. If you do need, you need three affirmative votes. Oh, I, I need to get all three. You need to get I thought three. I needed the majority. No, in, in this case, you need three. Well, in this case, I need three. In order to approve it, yeah, that's... that's Can I, are you going to vote? Um, I, would, I had intended to, yes. Oh, okay. Um, then, uh, let's go give me a good shot at it. Either way. Maybe, either way. <laughs> we'll, take what it, we'll, take, we'll take what we got. Let the record show that Mr. Krause accepts the form of the board. Mm -hmm. Very well. I'm going to go ahead and the, uh, uh, dispense with the uh, approval of the minutes for June, June 17th until we've heard both of these cases. We'll do that later on. And any other administrative chores. So let's, let's go ahead and begin with case number one. <coughs> or the first case, case number 13-06 actually. The applicant James Cropsey seeks a variance from Article 2.3.3, Section K of the Zoning Ordinance to permit five additional banners to, and to relocate their positions on the building per existing approval conditions for Riverfront Place. The property is located at 322 West Main Street in Tilton, New Hampshire. And it's in the downtown district, tax map U6. Plant one. So, if we'd like, you'd like to go ahead and uh, give us a brief presentation. Okay. Uh, well, uh, and any, anywhere in here, okay, to, sure. to set things? Yep. I may need to refer to them. <coughs> and uh, we can go over the criteria for the variance uh, after your presentation, if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think you know, they will have a, a full, pretty full packet of uh, uh, the types of things that I've been proposing. Uh, and Joe, you probably were here uh, from the very beginning uh, with this. Uh, I pulled this out of my archives. This is uh, an architect's rendering, uh, and it predates even our electrical plans. This was a, a type of rendering we would have had at the selectmen's meetings and uh, the uh, original planning board. Uh, but the, the, this particular plan, for some reason or other, uh, is missing uh, from uh, the, uh, the, the, the documents. We had Augusta look for it, and she can't find anything like this uh, of an elevation. And we would have had something like this, maybe not this particular one, but something like this for uh, uh, the selectmen and the That's planning fine. board at the yeah. time. Right. Um, and uh, this rendering shows the nine banners in the front. Uh, we've installed uh, sure, what? these yellow stripes are uh, banners. And we had nine banners in the front here. Uh, this was a, a metal awning, uh, which we later did not uh, uh, put in. We put in a cloth awning instead. That's something that uh, uh, the Front Medical Group uh, uh, wanted as opposed to the metal awning. Um, and we left 
the uh, stoops or pent roofs uh, these um, the way they were to keep the original uh, facade of the building in place. Um, so I see you have the, mm -hmm. the existing conditions. This would have been the metal awning on the map on, on, around this uh, elevation, and these are the, uh, the pent roofs uh, or strip roofs that uh, were originally on the building. Uh, and you can see the lights here. Uh, the lights would have been required by an electrical uh, uh, plan, and the lights are uh, in, in two instances where we would have had banners of the, of the nine banners. And the banner company uh, built banners uh, too long for us to install uh, where they were supposed to be installed, which is in here, which is why they've ended up on the side of the building and around the rear of the building, because we need to keep a certain elevation uh, above the sidewalks so that uh, I was mentioning to Augusta that uh, <coughs> people can't uh, reach up and uh, pretend they're uh, uh, on a gymnasium or a trapeze uh, or knock anybody's hat off, that sort of thing. So we're trying to keep them uh, well up there, eight, eight or uh, ten feet, whatever uh, you feel is appropriate. Um, so. Short situation. Uh, the banners did not end up where we approved to go, uh, and uh, we ended up putting four in place instead of nine uh, because of the uh, the size. Uh, was we could put four in, but the, the other five were too long, so we could, just didn't put them in at all. Um, and what we're looking at doing is something very similar to what the town has on its uh, telephone poles uh, and uh, Tangler Outlets has uh, uh, on, on their um, uh, light poles. Uh, these particular banners, uh, this uh, uh, bracket can be adapted to be uh, flush with the building and a flush mount to the building. Tended to be uh, no more than 30 feet extended from the bus. 30 inches. I'm sorry, 30 inches extended from the building, and they're approximately uh, 60 inches long. They're uh, you say 60. 60. It's about five foot. They're, okay. they're, what what, what uh, is available to us without uh, uh, making them more custom is something very similar to what the Tanger Outlets has. We're envisioning is to have the tenants uh, that we have there uh, design and uh, have their own particular banner done for their business, uh, and that would be subject to uh, my approval for uh, different colors, etc., and sizing, uh, and whether or not it would compete with other people's uh, banners. So, um, are you the manager? Basically, or the owner? Basically, uh, owner manager. Owner manager of the well, one of the structure. owners. One of the owners. One of the owners. Okay, thank you. But you are the manager. I'm, a, I'm the, the person with so the on the So ground. you would approve, you would be the one who would approve. I'd, I'd be the one who would be approving the, the, the specific colors if we're allowed to do something uh, more um, custom as opposed to semi custom. Which we can do. This somewhat depends upon what you approve tonight. Uh, uh, there would be the uh, option of having something that would be a bit more generic, uh, more like the Tanger banners or the Tilton banners, of which there are maybe four or five different varieties of the Tilton banner, the Tilton Northfield banners. I didn't photograph all of them. Perhaps I should have. So you plan to but you, might be you plan to fix these to the wall in between these long vertical windows? Yes, but the brackets stick vertically out from the so that wouldn't be flush to the, the wall, building, yeah. and it, it would be in the middle of those columns. It would replace any banners that the tenants have uh, placed there, uh, which they've actually placed without my permission. Uh, Joe, you're f familiar with the, the long-standing situation uh, that I've had with people wanting to have additional signage, but uh, uh, 
see you in America after you didn't yeah. prevent them from doing that. My question um, exactly, why, why are they still there? Uh, they really do need the signage. I don't have enough signage. You have signage out front? I have a 12 I have foot sign out there. Minimal signage out front. Um, I have uh, uh, 16 sign blanks mm -hmm. and 36,000 square feet. Uh, I've limited it to uh, uh, spaces uh, in excess of 500 square feet so that the smaller tenants in particular uh, would not be able to have a sign blank. It's um, just not possible. But they, perhaps they can switch with a banner instead of a sign blank. This justifies why you're not enforcing your own rules? Uh, <coughs> the town ordinances? I, I talked to uh, Al, and uh, Al had said that uh, the thing to do would be to wait until I have uh, uh, a uh, readback or, your, or feedback from you of your approval or denial, and then we'll, we'll move forward with removing them uh, if the, that's your uh, requirements. We're allowed one per building in which case uh, all the uh, non-compliant ones would be removed. Uh, and this way, uh, perhaps we can move to the other one. That was uh, from advice from Al. That's, uh, I think that's kind of subjective, yeah, actually. If you read the ordinance uh, 2.3.10.4, we're looking at uh, it states in their businesses in downtown area be restricted to 20 square feet, not buildings, not structures. Uh, so signage. depending on how you interpret that, you know, attached perpendicularly to the facade or, or attached perpendicularly to the, to, to the facade. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's right there. Um, I would... I would personally like to, to see some written evidence of the previous approval for nine, the nine banners. I, I've, I've been through the site plan and I, I can't find anything. Yet. I can't find anything in the uh, public book that I have for approved plans either, in all honesty. And I know that I had to have had something. Uh, <coughs> it doesn't exist. Something in front of me. I mean, I, I, I found. Uh, I found the, the, the um, artist's rendition of your sign up front, and I found approval for that right. sign in the minutes. Mm -hmm. I see nothing about uh, banners, nothing anywhere. Even in the minutes or any documentation, I've been through the whole stack. So I'm wondering where you got the, where that came from. It says here that, you know, pre-approved pre uh, Nine being free of food or existing conditions. Can't help you there. Uh, it goes back to the earliest correspondence I have with the uh, the architect that uh, he I asked him to do a rendition uh, and, and a rendering uh, for the first set of uh, meetings that we had in order to get our approvals. And uh, whatever he had originally uh, is is this or very close to it. This was in your hands. This isn't in the town's hands. I understand that. It's what the town has that counts. Um, you, you can't come up with stuff out of your basement <coughs> uh, seven, eight years later and say, this is what I meant. Joe, and, and my understanding okay. is that Augusta could not even find the uh, full set of plans. Um, so, um, well, we have the minutes of the meetings. And that, you, that, you, that doesn't you do even have the minutes of the meetings. Yes, and none of that discusses the backers. Um, I haven't found it either. But I really think it's kind of immaterial in a way because yeah. the uh, the issue here is you're proposing a, a 30 inch by 60 by five by five feet, right? Uh, as as <coughs> the, as they're proposed here, it, 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 and I think you're correct. It is immaterial because uh, material is on the building, and it does not meet code. So we do have to move towards uh, doing something that approximates uh, where the where the town is. Or where the town might like to be. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned that the uh, individual businesses would be creating their own banner. Is that 
they basically is that what you're saying? They, within certain parameters they would come up with their banner and uh, that's part of the reason why I'm here is because there's a, a certain uh, aesthetics that go with the banners besides a certain uh, size if you will and shape when you're trying to regulate something as it does uh, uh, on a facade so you're looking at a, a size and a shape instead of something that's that's uh, um, perhaps more random and the same thing is true with uh, with colors you may not uh, you may, uh, want to specify certain uh, parameters in the signs so, so let's say that we let's say that we back up here and go start with at ground zero with no banners no banners previously approved nothing let's okay. let's just start there hypothetically the reference that you've come up with 2.3.3k specifically says that one banner is authorized per property not to exceed four square feet correct one banner per property and my understanding with these uh, uh, types of banners is that uh, from talking to Al is that uh, these are a banner if you will but um, they're not necessarily what might have been initially intended by the uh, uh, by the zoning ordinance that uh, because they're they're fixed to the building in a completely different manner yeah, I, I see that yeah. you, you see and and that goes back to well uh, having discussed this with Al over uh, quite a long period to get to this uh, period of time to get to this point uh, of uh, having something a, a lot more concrete to discuss uh, and move forward with. What's driving this? Your tenants? Um, in part tenants, uh, in part that I have uh, created a uh, uh, an internal ordinance recognizing or an internal requirement uh, for the building. I've got 36,000 uh, some odd uh, square feet. Mm. And now I've got tenants that are interested in uh, 200 square foot rooms, the old exam rooms from the oh, doctors. Yeah. And what's driving it is uh, now I have uh, 200 square foot rooms, all of whom want some sort of signage. And there is no w way I can do that and for every uh, 200 square feet in a 36,000 square foot building. How many would you have hypothetically? Uh, there's 13. If they were filled. There's 13 exam rooms. In addition to the 16 shingles that you have now up front? Um, is that what you're talking? Yeah. 13 uh -huh. more? So 30 so plus it, it, uh, it, it, with 36,000 <coughs> square feet, um, even if you're looking at now uh, let's say 500 square feet being a minimum for a sign, uh, 36,000 square feet, um, I end up with uh, 30, uh, I end up with 16 sign blanks out of that 30,000 square feet with, with no spares uh, uh, if everything is used. Now, if some of the tenants are 200 square feet um, and, and it's 13 of them, are 200 square feet. I now have, uh, I, I have in excess of, of, uh, of 16 sign blanks I need, mm -hmm. and that's that's all I have on on the, uh, the sign, mm -hmm. and that's splitting the sign blanks in half, so that you get down to uh, a, a very very tiny print um, on on the uh, sign that I have there. So I have a, a, a you might say a choice of applying and getting a Another sign, uh, you know, for second sign, a second sign which somewhere, which which is going to direct people in a different manner than I want them directed, uh, or uh, for instance, f further down the street or further up the street, away from the entrance, which is not going to be beneficial to me or or the tenants. What's the material for these banners that you're proposing to? Um, what are they made of? Um, they're, uh, they say they're canvas. It's probably some form of vinyl uh, vinyl uh, canvas. Uh, they say in here, uh, 13 ounce vinyl, uh, outdoor grade uh, to resist fading and cracking. 
I would expect that they probably have to be replaced uh, at least as as, uh, um, as frequently as the Tilton banners or the uh, Tanger outlet banners. A couple of years. Yeah, I know they they can uh, they can look great when they're new, but they can deteriorate. They can deteriorate and then need to be replaced. But uh, at least if I uh, source them all through the same company, uh, they keep the graphics on file, and I can get a new set uh, reasonably quickly and, and uh, inexpensively compared to a custom banner, uh, each new custom banner. You make it sound like you're doing this, and you're doing this with the tenant doing this. Um, well, I need to, you know, as a manager, I need to set the guidelines. So, and, and I would have to put the, the, uh, the brackets up. The tenants would be, their responsibility would be to come up with the banner. But while, they're, while the brackets are being installed, that's when I would probably uh, uh, step in and also install their banners. <coughs> Such a beautiful facade. I just, um, I can't. Uh, without some kind of an artist, uh, something to work with. It's hard for me to imagine what this would look like with all these banners sticking out from the building like that. It's, it's difficult to picture that. Well, it's one of the reasons why I brought this. Uh, that doesn't help. help. Yeah. It, that doesn't help. It doesn't work. help that much. Well, uh, I, I don't understand one thing. You're talking about having a lot of businesses when you start talking about 10 by 20, I can't even, or 200 square feet, I can't even imagine what kind of business you're talking about other than maybe an accountant. Um, well, we have new tenants in place. Uh, we have uh, a couple of new uh, psychologists, uh, uh, counselors uh, as well. And Is this a medical group? Is that what you're talking about? It, it's just, it, they're all individual practitioners. Oh, and okay. we have a nutritionist, uh, <coughs> you know, a... Uh, uh, I got a deposit from a, uh, um, a, 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 a it's like a visiting nurse association. Um, so that's that seems to be the types of businesses that I'm getting now, or smaller businesses, uh, desirous of space. I, I would, would have loved to have leased the whole thing to a larger tenant, and that's part of, partly why I've been waiting, because it looked like it was, this was going to be unnecessary. Um, that uh, we'd be fine leaving things the way we were, or perhaps my pulling down the existing uh, uh, banners under Al's direction. Um, Go with the sign out front. Pardon? And, be and give them just the, the sign blanks out front. Yeah. That's what you've got. Uh, you know, you don't have permission to put anything else up. Take it all down. That was, that was the way your plan was originally approved. I mean, oh, with with no when I was here. Yes, with no with no uh, no banners, no banners on the building the way correct. they've installed. That's not correct. not uh, not haphazardly the way they are. Understood. No, not anyway the way they are. After I left, uh, nobody really enforced it. Even the signs that you have on there now, even though they're small signs, uh, they're still there. Th those were not approved. I know that. Uh, the tenants knew that too. Well, I, I don't want to say they're not approved because the way I read 2.3, 0.10, 0.4, um, there is some leeway in there to be read into the fact that their business can have 20 square feet uh, to be located on the facade or attached perpendicularly to the facade of the building. Mm -hmm. So there's a certain amount of leeway there already that what I'm seeing in the ordinance itself, which wasn't there when I was working here full time. Or, no, uh, no. But this is not necessarily a sign. That's the other uh, factor, and it goes back to uh, the uh, intent that you might have with uh, uh, banners. Uh, is that what's on the building? These these banners uh, uh, could easily be a sign, uh, whereas these these could not be. So it's it's how they're affixed to the building. And I think, to a certain degree, technology has changed on Tilton, and the ordinance uh, perhaps hasn't quite kept pace. They do have these things, feather flags, which are not allowed in Tilton, 
uh, some other towns uh, uh, have allowed them, uh, but I don't believe they're allowed in Tilton. Well, according to the definitions, a, uh, a sign would be considered a a board, poster, or placard displayed in public view to advertise or to convey information or direction. Sign banners and or flags commercial. A flag or banner which presents commercial advertising copy or other graphic material, logos, and other symbols associated with commercial businesses. As far as I'm concerned, you're talking signage, no matter how you look at it. So, uh, effectively, these could be considered to be signs of which uh, each business would be allowed 20 square feet mm -hmm. total. Okay. Well, I mean that. And that. It. it well, that's the way. That's I partly why I'm, I'm I'm here because I I would read that and I and I was looking at this as a banner, which is where Al had come across with it and says, well, that's really a banner, Jim. And I said, well, I think I need to go to ZBA and have a heart-to-heart -heart with you guys yeah. as to uh, what exactly it is. Now, that's a, we have quite a large facade on the building, yeah. which is the, there's another facade limitation as to how much uh, uh, signage we could have on the building. Mm -hmm. So, well, you're not even approaching that number now. Um, well, <clears throat> not now, but I would like to give it some sort of uniformity. Uh, and aesthetic appeal. If you've got all these 30 inch wide banners sitting on these brackets, perpendicular to each other, and someone coming down the street uh, looking at the building itself, they're not going to see those, they're not going to be able to read those banners. Now, now let's say they're, they're passing the building and looking at it from an angle. They're still not going to be able to read them because one's going to be partially covering the other. Two. Understood. So. <laughs> Un understood. I know. I, I mean, I'm trying to visualize this, and I don't think it's going to work. I, I, I'm not convinced that it's the right way to do this. You know, because it's just going to be to me a phenomenal waste of, of, of money. If if they can't be read, they can't be read looking directly at the building. They can't be read from an angle. Or partially read. Who's going to be able to tell who's who? Well, they, they get the impression. What, what purpose of, are they going to serve? You get the impression as you go by of movement. Yeah. Uh, as the uh, the uh, the decal, if you will, or the signage itself becomes visible, uh, and the eye is always caught to uh, a difference or movement, and that's what we're anticipating that will catch people's eye uh, is the. Uh, the, uh, the movement as they go by of the, uh, these banners appearing and dis or disappearing, as the case may be, as they go by. And that would hopefully catch people's attention. Okay. Now, at the same time, I have been to the tenants and uh, explained this to them as well. They seem to be for it, but uh, at the same time, uh, they may not, uh, just because uh, they say they're going to put their money up where their mouth is, they may decide not to put their money up either. Yeah. Which puts me back to the, the same thing of coming up with a different sign and coming back for uh, uh, probably planning board at that point as opposed to an exception. 29, up to 29 businesses in that building. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That's phenomenal. What's well, a big that's amazing. And that's, that's sort of my hardship is that uh, with the existing ordinances the way they are, that's uh, a huge sign that I'd have to erect to get all those businesses on there. I think it would be within the realm of uh, a feasible approach to have more than one major sign or to have it in a V shape, if you will, so you could see it coming from either direction in order to list the number of tenants. That wouldn't be unreasonable mm -hmm. to ask for, even though it would be oversized in that regard. But if you had that many tenants, it would be a different ball game than what you're here for now. True. Okay. True. But uh, if, if that was necessary, I could certainly see that coming mm -hmm. before the board to uh, expand that kind of signage in order to 
as reflect your tenants as an alternative. As an alternative to these banners, what you're talking about? Yes. No, because I think you'd still be you'd still be able to still be able to, to go that other route where you'd have the, the major sign that the ordinance mm -hmm. had always called for it, mm -hmm. with all the tenants listed. Now, if they can't be, if they can't fit, okay, then obviously you need a bigger sign or more than one sign, which in, in uh, professional parks I've seen more than one sign yeah. listing the tenants that are in there. Yeah. Okay, that's not. Yeah, that a, can that's be done. Reason. That's, that's a, okay. an, another alternative uh, right. that uh, we had considered too. I mean, that to me would make more sense than use the phrase, junking up the front of the building with a whole bunch of different signs expecting that people are going to be able to drive by right and read here. these things. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I may be thinking it, but I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're, uh, we're, the spade is spade. Uh, everything's of the, uh, the beauty's in the eye of the beholder, let's put it that way. Uh, you know. Um, well, we're, you know, we're looking out for your, your good, I, too. I, I mean, understand. Not I just understand. the towns. Um, we don't want to see you do anything to diminish the beauty of that building, for one thing. And we want we want you to be able to come up with something that's functional and practical. We're not, I uh, appreciate you that. know, sign experts by any means. You know, I'm, draw I'm, us attention to what I'm not do. really either. Maybe Roland could help me out. <laughs> so, well, I'll be, get, I'll be getting to the public in a minute, but, you know, we're just trying to look at it from a practical standpoint. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'd really like to see a picture of what you expect the end result to look Me too. like. Not just the naked too. building. Yeah. Okay. okay. What you've shown us here and then the rest is verbalization um, really doesn't do a whole lot. I can try to get somebody to put together a, a, a rendering. Uh, it, it, it's, it's hard to get something like that. I mean, you, you end up getting it tiny, you know, or, or but to get something full sized is is going to be quite difficult. Um, well, we wouldn't need we wouldn't need the, the entire facade, front side facade. Just just, a the, just maybe a down to the first like a couple center of the building or something. Yeah. No, I'd like to see what the buildings are look like with all these signs on it. Oh, sort of this size? Yeah, use yeah, your graphic. Doesn't have to be huge. Have program to uh, well, I can to, to put that. signs on on the building. How you're anticipating that you're asking for? Okay. Uh, for some kind of an approval. Well, before we make a decision on that, let, let's, can, let's take a break and see what the, anybody out, out in the audience would like okay. to say about this, okay? Okay. It might be interesting. Uh, I, I might like what they come up with. <laughs> we might do. <laughs> you might do. <laughs> so anyone in favor? In favor? <laughs> I said in favor. Oh, oh, oh I do want to speak in favor. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're not voting yet. <laughs> okay. Anyone opposed or any rebuttals? No, uh, just a comment, Jim. Uh, just a it. general comment? Yeah. Uh, That's not one of the categories of our right now. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Roland. <laughs> Middle of the road. <laughs> but uh, I, I understand what they're saying, Jim, but um, you can put the signs up according with the according with the ordinance says. You have that capacity, but is it really going to look good? Yeah. You know, when you start doing all those things on the front of that building, is it going to be beneficial to you? You're going to spend all that money. Yeah. The tenants are going to spend all that money. And once it's up, they're going to go, this doesn't work. This really looks, you know, is this people really can't read it. Is it the right way to go? Okay. Um, I, you know, I think that's the big issue. They can say, yeah, go ahead and do it. You're probably going to be here in six months from now asking for that other side because that's not going to accomplish what you want. That, that's always a fear with any of this, is that uh, um, it's, uh, um, they all demand signage. It's like everybody yeah. downtown demands more parking. Yeah, exactly. But do what you happens? really need yeah. more signage or yeah. more parking uh, when, in fact, what they should be telling everybody is, just look for Riverfront Place and pull in. I'm right. in here. Absolutely. You know? yeah. and, uh, uh, and that's what they really should be saying. And it isn't lack of signage that uh, uh, has driven their business down, but just the general economy, um, which is another reason why this sort of uh, and you say, to look, yeah, spend a thousand dollars for every one of those signs, go to your tenants and grab, you know, thirty thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars worth of signs and put them up. And it's fifty thousand dollars worth of waste. It doesn't work. You got a building full of holes, right? And then you got a building full of holes. Yeah. And it's a great building. We 
would you uh, would you like to uh, postpone this uh, to a time certain to give you an opportunity to uh, get a, a rendering of this? I, I think that that would be beneficial to me. And uh, uh, whether when would rendering four weeks give you enough time? I hope so. It will be because we will be meeting, I believe. Don't, don't we have a, uh, a case next month? Yes, we do. Uh, no, the option, Jim. It's about up to one. You said you could potentially have 50 up there? 50 signs? Uh, so, let's we'll see, it'd be 30, uh, be close to 45 if it's every 200 square feet. I don't see, I don't what, see every 200 square feet, but I don't know what the wide, future holds. Five feet high, what if you split them in half? You put two on each. Two on each. Well, now had, you, you, you trim down the number, and now you're not filling up the building with 60 signs, you're putting 30 signs up. You're still, like getting, you're still not getting the visibility, yeah, though, even if you do it. I mean, I, I think that's... Spread them out. Which can be yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you have to spread them out more. Yeah. One of the other considerations, and this is uh, what I was initially able to come up with, uh, they do call them custom banners, but in actuality, uh, they can be reduced in size, and uh, uh, optically, from the inside of the building, the ideal uh, uh, the ideal size of those banners is actually to be um, the width, no more than the width of the column that they're faced, that they're on. Right. So that when somebody looks, when you're looking out the window, you actually are not going to see a banner. Box, right. and that optically, that's that's what you need. So they actually need to be smaller. Yeah, otherwise you're, it's, it's like you got blinders on. You tunnel vision or blinders. So, uh, you know, this is what I could find, but uh, uh, it would probably be smaller than this. The, uh, the post would still take, uh, I mean, the post can take any size I can put on it. Marina, do you have any, anything you'd like to contribute here? No. No, because I don't think it would work. Yeah, I, think, um, I don't think it would work either. It'd be too small. No, not that. My thought. I was thinking something in windows. In the windows themselves? Mm. But then again, you can't quite see it from the road. So either way, you're still at that point of somebody driving by trying to look <laughs> as to where they need to go out of 30 places. Right. And again, Marina, so what, they, what probably they should be saying is we're in Riverfront Place. Right. And you come in, yep. everyone goes uh -huh. in the main entry, and then you look at, at, the, at the directory the right. and find out the signboard inside, yeah. find out where people yeah. are. Get mm -hmm. off the road, or otherwise it's no different than texting while you're Right. Driving and trying to read all these signs. Whoa. I, I've noticed myself doing that before when there was other types of tenants in there driving by mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. I would go up further and turn around and come back this way and really look. <laughs> 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 Not at the road, but at the, <laughs> at the building to uh, see like a couple it. of certain places. I, I think either way, advertising is a way to go also paper-wise. I agree with you in regards to the banners. It's just going to look like all this wavy, cool stuff. It'll make people pull in to see what's there. But you're talking a lot of expense. What, 200 bucks per person to pay? I don't think you were, you were talking about fixed banners, right? They're not going to wave. No. They're, yeah. they're rigid. Well, they're, 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 they're rigid. rigid. They're, there would be, there would, there's always some movement in them mm -hmm. uh, because the lines do stretch a little bit, uh, yeah. in all honesty. But uh, it's a good uh, distraction. It's it, they're basically fixed. Mm -hmm. and I, I have a question relative to the way it was originally written up that you were actually seeking five additional banners predicated upon an original nine. You said that you well, we're we're backtracking that nothing is this. Yeah, we will. Right. Okay. Back that's that's what I said. Well. Okay. Yeah. But what, what you've introduced another factor here that this doesn't talk about. And now you're talking about a place that's going to have 36 business or 30 plus business, and 
that changes the whole perspective on, on what you're going to do to a building. Okay, that's not that's not nine. That's not about five. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not sure you know what you were asking. It'd be fourteen for. versus uh, 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 the existing uh, sixteen, which actually gives me a total of forty. Um, uh, forty oh, signed okay. sign spaces. For, forty sign possibilities for people as opposed to uh, the other. Because I may end up having to put one side of the, of the signs uh, as, as 16 on one side and 16 on the other. But it really doesn't solve the, the issue of people driving by and saying, I thought I saw uh, total body physical therapy in there, but on the other side of the sign, it doesn't say they're in there. So it, it just lends confusion to the whole uh, thing if I, if I do it. Are these people on the road that you're talking about? The people, people the general public, yeah. yeah. General public. So it, it, it uh, um, it's a difficult. Yeah, the off-road directory is definitely the, a, a great way with a lot of businesses like that. Where you can pull down the driveway, just read, read the uh, directory. Read the directory right on the I know. Yeah. I agree with you, too. Well, we appreciate your cooperation. Well, I, I appreciate this and understanding. Um, what would you like to do? Uh, I think take a look at it. We'll uh, come up with the rendering. Uh, I'll uh, see if I can get uh, a full uh, or appropriate tenant yeah. approval. With and more than just the banner, you're talking about other options as well? Uh, well, banners is, is one option. Yeah. I've been talking to them about the uh, okay. uh, uh, basically, there are certain tenants that do want banners. Really? Yeah. And they feel that that will drive their business. Mm. Um. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. You know. So. Okay. Um, so that, if I may, what I'd like to do would be to come up with this rendering that, uh, that yep. you suggested. I think that'll be a good. We have time. You still have some blank shingles there, so we have a little time on our hands. Uh, yeah, I, I do. It hasn't. It hasn't become critical yet, but uh, I also want the building to aesthetically look better than what it does now, uh, and uh, uh, meet uh, the town's requirements sure. without uh, being ordered to take down without patterns. I'd rather. Uh, to have another alternative in place that the tenants would appreciate. Probably ought to think about a sign ordinance of your own as manager. Um, All those. Th that's th that's one of the things I've been working on, and, 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 and this okay. was this was part of it, partially because it was it was one of the suggestions. Okay, we'll set you up uh, for next month then. September sixteenth. Okay. Okay. And. Um, Do you need to vote to continue. Yep. Uh, I haven't voted yet, but that's that's just my proposal right now. Um, and uh, oh, darn you, Joe! You made me lose my train of thought. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So we'll set you up for the 16th. Uh, come up with some options here, and you'll have to you'll have to uh, come up with a different description of what you want, obviously. Okay. And. And redo. Well, I don't think we need to. If we're setting a time certain, now, we wouldn't have to re-notify all the above. Right. That's the time so, certain, yeah. yeah, we don't want to get into the expense of that. No. We try to save us. It'd be avoided. And, uh, and part of this also was to work with uh, uh, the town and Al to determine exactly what it was intended by the ordinance uh, with uh, the signage. These are signs, or specifically allowed as signs, then uh, I think, you know, the town should, uh, should make that determination. I don't want to go. Okay. Uh, Appreciate that. Um, so that's my, that's my motion. Do I have a second? Motion to continue. I have a second. Uh, okay, we have a motion and a second to continue until the 16th. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. It's approved. Thank you. We'll see you then. Thank you for your cooperation. Well, thanks for the input. Good luck out there with that. Well, you never know when you open up a can of worms what's going to happen. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you to catch the fish. <laughs> we'll see you in four weeks. Very good. Thank 17. you. 17? I think she said that. Oh, it's the 17th?
No, it's a 60. It's a 60. Okay, 60. Thank Hang you. on, make me Thanks again, Jim. You're welcome. No, it's 16. Do we need a break? Everybody okay to go on? I'd love a drink of water. Go ahead. Where's the waitress? Okay, turn it in for Heiser. Oh, Heiser, thank You're you. Yeah. I thought that you might be silent. Yeah. It's a tricky one. People usually spell wrong. Oh, I bet. You probably get all kinds of variations. Oh, yeah. I just crossed out the U. <laughs> That's why I tell people it's Heiser. It's just like silent. We'll be right with you. Thank you, waiters. I do something wrong? I got the same garment twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, she didn't get that larger overview. Oh, okay. Surrounding properties. Okay. Does that help you? Should we go upstairs? I guess so. We're going to be here for a while. Seeking a special exception from Article 6, Roman numeral 6, Appendix B, Rural Charter Permitted Use, Section C, Recreation and Entertainment, to allow indoor recreation facility in the region. Regional Commercial District. The property is located at 18 Bittern Lane, Hilton. Tax map R24-5. Would you like to make a, a brief presentation? Sure. Um, this is the this is an artist's rendition of what the building could possibly look like. Um, probably not exactly at this point, but we just want to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. So, in by 2006, I was actually approved to build a car dealership on that property. Uh, it was a 22,900 square foot facility with 250 parking spaces. And we had all the wetland permits, the site specific, and the, um, the driveway permits were all approved for that usage. And then in 2010, uh, we sold the dealership and we didn't end up building it. So, what we're proposing now is we would like to have a change of use so that we could go forward and build a um, two field indoor soccer facility where people could play soccer and lacrosse, um, anything that you could basically play on the field indoors and uh, as part of that facility we would also have like, a small cafe and locker rooms and so on like that. So the building itself we're looking at right now is about 30,000 square feet roughly um, with about 150 parking spaces and the idea is to take the existing pad that we originally had approved and stay within that footprint. Is there a pad down here now? There's no physical pad, no. I'm, just, I'm talking about uh, I didn't think so. I mean, the gate's locked, so we couldn't go down the It's lane getting a little thrown up in there, too. It's hard to, it's hard to understand. understand. Yeah. Is it near where that little old house is? Yeah. That's exactly. Uh, well, actually, okay. there's an old, I think in your packet is the original site plan for the dealership. Uh, I don't think. Yeah. It's, it's it's a oh, yeah. Okay. And that's right where that yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. Right there. That's the one. So you can kind of see like this area here, and then there's like a 22,000 square foot building. We had a lot of parking, obviously, because we had to have a um, place to store the inventory, as well as uh, sure. it's parking. Do 
Did you say you were going to have two full fields in there? Yeah, we're looking at, this is actually um, the rendition we have here. So this field here on the inside is 190 feet by 85 feet wide. And then these two fields here are 120 by 85 feet. Okay. So that gives us the ability to actually run tournaments and full lacrosse. Um, so like Upstairs. at a higher level of, of soccer. And then these, these fields are for 6v6. So you can have your adult leagues on that, you have um, your kids' leagues, and so on and so forth. But this would be, this would allow us to have tournaments in the facility, which there's no one around here that can do that. Is that mimic somewhat the building up on the arm drive? How large is that? Is this one of the questions? Uh, are you talking about Bob's property? Yes. Bob's property is, um, his whole building is 10,000 square feet. And his field is actually smaller than the 120 by 85. Yeah, so I took the right one. That's massive. Wow. Is this something you're going to build yourself? Yes. Or Myself, no? my partner, William Bald, and Michael Gagnon. Greetings. Uh, okay. Any questions, folks? When would you anticipate building this? This is possible. Um, <laughs> this, this property's been sitting empty for a long time, <laughs> costing us a ton of money. So, um, you know, if we could get this, if we could get everything approved, then I'd like to see us start in the spring. Now. Hopefully, I mean, if we could get a spring open, that would be terrific. But more realistically, we're we'll probably looking at fall. Of next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious whether we're looking at five years out or. No, we're looking to do it right away. Um, so one of the things is I'm, you know, we're negotiating, um, we're negotiating our financing right now, and um, we have a contractor who is putting together, um, you know, the final cost and so on. So. Ingress, egress to this place. What kind of, you know, what kind of conversation do you have with the DOT? Oh. Um, DOT. Well, they asked me to have a traffic go. segmentation done, so we had that done, and that should be part of your package. I didn't put it in there. Oh, you didn't? Okay. No. Um, we had a market segmentation done, and when he did the study, he compared, um, he compared a facility that actually had uh, six fields. All right to a dealership that was approved, that was the size of the dealership that we had approved. And he actually found that the, the traffic impact was going to be less for this facility than for the, than for the dealership originally that was approved there. I'll show you. Coming out of and going in on better land than the existing? Um, they were, the DOT was more interested in um, how it was going to impact Route 3. And yes, so we. Correct. Bob, there might be another little folder in that, in your, in the, in the, in that. This one? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it might be in there because I'm not finding it in my office. Okay. So, he said, do you want just to read it to you? Sure. You sure. Um, Generation. Pursuant to discussions with the applicant, the facility is likely to be used for several different sports, including but not limited to soccer, football, and cross. Use of the facility will generally be weekdays and afternoons and evenings for matches between local and out-of-town teams and league play and morning clinics for mornings for clinics. So, slow down and get a little louder, please. <laughs> mornings for clinics, practices, and children's games. In order to determine the trip generation characteristics of the facility, the standard trip generation rates published by the Institute of Transportation Engineers were employed. The most representative land use was determined to be soccer complex land use code 488, which was therefore used in determining the trip generation for the proposed development. As a playing field can be divided into as many as three smaller fields, we conservatively assume this worst case for the purposes of our analysis, the trip generation calculator calculations are as follows, which frankly is Greek to me, so you're going to have to look at that. Um, and then he says, at this point in comparison, we consider the previously approved automobile dealership use for the site using ITE land use code 841 for automobile sales. The following trip generation was used. And then in summary, the trip generation for the proposed facility is less than that of the previously approved automobile dealership in the peak periods and significantly less over the course of the day. Um, 
Based on our review of the existing intersection conditions, we expect that the traffic generated by the proposed development will easily be accommodated by the study intersection. This is primarily due to the gaps created by the signals at Walmart and Lowe's, as well as the availability of the opposing left-hand turn lane for use by vehicles turning into and out of Bittern Lane. Furthermore, the trip generation for the facility is minimal in comparison to the traffic flow on the adjacent street, adding only one to two additional vehicles per minute on the average. This minimal increase will be imperceptible to other roadway users along the East Main Street. Our specific findings and recommendations are as follows. You need to read my word. I'd like to read one or the other. Okay. Um, existing operations at the Main Street East Bitter Lane intersection appear favorable in peak hour conditions. Cues from the nearby intersections are unlikely to interfere with traffic operations at Bitter Lane under the current signal timings. The trip generation for the proposed athletic and event facility is less than the previously approved automobile dealership. During the weekday PM peak hour of the adjacent street, the facility will add less than one new trip per minute on the average. The peak hour of the facility will occur on Saturday mornings before 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. peak hour of the adjacent street. We recommend that the pavement condition on Bitter, Bitter Lane be evaluated prior to placement of wearing course. Is that like a top? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, as it appears that some repairs may be warranted, we recommend that the crosswalk and stop bar be repainted as they have faded over time. And I think that's at the top of their lane where it intersects with the concrete. So um, <coughs> we'll make sure that you have a copy of this. Well, if I don't know that it's so important that we do have planning for it. Yeah, I, well, I had it. It, it was in there in a small uh, folder. Bob, did you find it? Um, I've been listening and, and sort of searching. I haven't found it yet. But I, I think it's in a separate folder in okay. there. I, I didn't know it was really, I thought it would be more for planning board then. So this has been presented to the DOT. I'm still waiting to hear back from them, but it takes a little bit to get back. Waiting to hear back from you? For the DOT. So um, it's been presented to the DOT. Oh, okay. The segmentation study has been presented. That's, then what you read to us is not from the DOT. That's from your engineer? Correct. That's not from my engineer. That's from, they asked for a market segmentation study, traffic segmentation okay. study. And that's the study that was done. So they oh, have right. that study now? They do. Okay, so we're, we're still waiting to hear from DOT really, Correct. how they're going to look at it. Correct. Uh, they being mm -hmm. the controlling factor. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I have the traffic analysis here. I do have it. So. Mm -hmm. I've got you. And through that whole thing, I feel that, that we need something yeah. from the DOT. Uh, so essentially, these, these folks will be coming in. Uh, crossing Route 3, mm -hmm. both exiting and coming in, depending on which direction they're coming from. Correct. They'll have to have cross that, that yellow section, yellow line section, to get into the Right. I did hear you correctly, but you said that building was going to be 30,000 square feet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Quite small. I, I thought it would go a lot larger than that. Well, the field space Three itself is around, is around 22,800 square feet, and then we're going to have a small, you know, smaller area mm -hmm. for lockers and so on. But the majority of the, of the space is actually the field. Well, what do you think the demand for this type of thing is going to come from? Well, we're looking at um, we're looking at Bow as our closest competitor, mm -hmm. and um, currently Bow operates three large fields, and they're at capacity. And so most of the people who have kids that are in soccer or lacrosse from six years of age right up until they're 19 have to travel down to either Bow or the Coast Seacoast um, in order to play. So it's you know it's a three-hour round trip with the game. We have a population of about 156,000 people within a 30 to 40 minute radius. So we think that we can, we can fill it in. And people who play soccer and lacrosse are really dedicated. These kids are so dedicated to it. Are you geared specifically only for those two sports? No, we could play anything on this field. We could play soccer. We're, gonna, we're <coughs> predominantly going to be looking at the soccer and lacrosse. Mm -hmm. um, as no building, building the leagues out, but we can play like, you know, we can play flag football, mm -hmm. ultimate frisbee, dodgeball, field hockey, 
Um, there's a sport out called box lacrosse, which is a very short lacrosse mm -hmm. game that's becoming very popular. Uh, anything that you can play on a field, you could play in here because we have enough height for football and rugby, and volleyball. we have a lot. And we have a lot of volleyball. We have a lot of distance um, for any of these sports too, particularly lacrosse, which needs a slightly larger field. And the tournaments, we can do. Um, what would you call them? Would you call them professional tournaments or um, state sanctioned? State sanctioned tournaments. So that was you know, the idea to make sure that you know you could have an actual high school soccer. Game. Mm. Or lacrosse and, and I'll defer my soccer <laughs> soccer <laughs> stuff to Mike because he knows more about soccer than I do. So you say you're saying it's going to be high enough to play football in? It, yeah, the the it's, span is I think it's 35 feet. Perhaps tall. yeah, perhaps not. You know the big punts and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're talking flag football. Yeah, yeah. Not the not the regular NFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you are talking flag football. We've had some interest from the NFL flag league out in Meredith. Is the football different than flag football? Or is it, was it a nerf ball? Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, well. It's almost like arena football. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the same thing now a few times. Uh, Good point. In Manchester, they have arena football. Yeah. How high would you say? I've never been there. How high would you say? Well, that's considerably yeah. taller than what they're going to be, but yeah. still, they'll be able to play that in that Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to air it out the same way you could, you know, outside. No. There's yeah. no way, but it still would be a, it'd be a modified it's football game. I'm not saying that we could do a sanctioned, you know, uh, high school football game in this facility, but you could do soccer and lacrosse. Mm -hmm. and, and we have had interest from there's a, there's a NFL flag football league in Meredith that we've been talking with it that has interest in you know utilizing the field as well. Living in Bo. I'm familiar with the facility there, being a soccer official too, uh, and involved with the ball facility. I mean, this is something we thought about going forward with people to the punch uh, um, at our property downtown. And what are they going to draw? They're going to draw huge up here because being involved with the facility in Bow, I see kids coming in from Plymouth, Latonia, Guilford, north of Plymouth, uh, obviously Tilton, Franklin, Northfield. They're all coming down there. Um, he's already talking about how much of a hit he's going to take when these kids start coming up here. When Bedford opened up their huge facility, now Bedford's got a massive soccer field down there, and I've done referee down there a number of times uh, for full-size games. Uh, just like Bo has just small, uh, you know, uh, 6v6, the small fields. With the field that you're proposing right here, it's going to be full-size field. Uh, Similar to Bedford, mm -hmm. uh, that's just it's it's going to be huge, especially if you open up a venue to high school soccer. Not just the impact of this area is going to be just big, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about high school soccer, whether that would be incorporated. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we're really not <clears throat> not here at this time to. Uh, go one way or the other on what this game is. Oh, the business doing. parents, yeah. yeah. We're just talking about in general. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to know a little bit about huh? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know the zoning purposes, Joe, I think, gets right in. Uh, well, I mean, if you look at our, our ordinance, I mean, theoretically, you put a movie, movie theater in there and put a couple hundred people in a movie theater at one time and they'd all be coming and going at the same thing, that would present a problem, too. To me, the whole thing comes down to the DOT. And whatever they think the road will handle, mm -hmm. and if they require something different, then you're either going to have to comply with it, or you're not going to be able to move forward. Right. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, but as far as the use itself, uh, I, I don't see where there really is a, a problem with that aspect of it, from my perspective, because uh, other things far, far more significant. Did you um, did you want to go through the exceptions questions or you uh, with that? The, uh, we can. I, I just uh, wanted to ask everyone else who had a chance to speak here. Did you want to say anything, sir? No. You're all set? Yeah. Okay. Peter's been with me on this project since 2004 <laughs> in its various guises. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh, I, I, that would be William. <laughs> oh. No, I just yeah. printed it as you said. Oh, I guess it was John then. It was John. Yeah, was John wrote it. Yeah. All right. Have you all got a copy of that, Maria? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I do, sir. As three members of the board, you write right, 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 right. Yes. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we're covered there. I think you, you did, right? Yeah. Okay. Why don't we take just a few minutes sure. and, and let us uh, read, read your responses here. Thank you very much for that. Good presentation. No, that's not necessary. It's all commercial there anyway. Oh, really? Yeah, two streets up from Which one? Which one are you pointing to? Lighting and shines. Uh, well, I mean, she, say that the property so does go out to Route 3. It goes out along the uh, edge yeah. of the ice pond. There's, uh, there's 90 feet of frontage. Okay. I'm sorry? There's 90, 90 feet of frontage. Yes, I mean, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, that's not the issue. lighting, yeah. Uh, lighting is size of lighting. That's all safe yeah. print. Yeah, yeah, that's really right. nice. No, it's just for us to look at, but it's not too much. Okay. 
make any determinations based on what they're going to see. I'm sure anything that stuff along with Because they do, uh, it's, it's general policy for them to go for down cast lighting anyways, okay? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. matter of fact, the ordinance calls for down cast lighting. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. I think those are outside of the DOT. Yeah, I think you the only two conditions type thing I would be thinking in terms of would be uh, a time frame that it uh, uh, would have to be constructed in order for the special exception to remain valid. Yeah, within a year. I mean, well, I mean, I wouldn't put them to a year, but I mean, I don't want something to hang on forever and then somebody else come along and go their own way and claim that they, you know, it had a special exception that goes on forever with the land, like a variance. It doesn't do that. And, uh, and of course, the DOT compliance. Yeah, well, she, uh, Paula was talking about possibly a full build out by fall of 2013. Well, yeah, uh, so I mean, you know, make the special exception good for like three years to. Uh, to start uh, construction. Uh, if it hasn't happened by then, then they would have to reapply for special exception again. Three years? Yeah. Three years sound um, logical? Mm -hmm. I just, uh, one of the things that tends to happen with these kind of things is that we give a special exception and you decide to not do it or decide to get halfway done and and somebody else steps in and acquires the operation, and they want to go a whole new direction. Well, maybe that's not what we heard here tonight. It could be totally different, right. okay. and I want to avoid that. There's a reason. Because uh, when I worked here, I saw that kind of thing happen, and it, it kind of fouls everything up, shall we say. Right. Good point. Marina, you want to study this for a little bit longer? Give me a little more time. Any questions? Signage. Yeah. They'll probably they will be dealing with that with a planning board mm -hmm. and site plan review. I think it's a great idea, but in regards to the traffic, it's always a concern. Mm -hmm. Big concern. Keep in mind also, if somebody wanted to put a movie theater in there, we wouldn't even be seeing them. Right, because they're all in and, and out they could do that. at the same time. I think Hampshire Hills would be nice, personally. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the majority of the activity Operating that's costs taking those place... Operating are expensive, though. Yeah. That's the uh, downside. Mm. Of the you don't have to have tennis. <laughs> I can't do tennis anymore. <laughs> okay. Which sport would you like, Joe? <laughs> so the, the tournaments that you're, Swimming. you're planning on Swimming, yeah. would be on weekends, you said? That's we a good idea, Paul. Like yeah. yeah. Most of the traffic and activity would be on weekends, did you say? The prime time for these facilities is generally weekdays from like 3 to 10. 3 to 10. And then weekends, you know, during the day. Be interesting to see what DOT comes up with. Yeah, I would go along with that. Those those two those two conditions sound see appear to me to be Oh, what do you think? Yeah. Sounds good. You want to write them down? Or? Didn't you just write them down? No, I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you did. No, I just, these are just general notes. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, I meant to point out earlier that three of us had viewed the property. We chose, I chose not to bother you about it. Going over there. Did you go over? No, I slowly rode by. Okay. <laughs> what was the it's red light? It's red light. Pretty brushy in there at this point. Yeah, I'm not going down in there. You get a better vantage point, Bob, from the back of our building. Yeah, there's nothing to see when you drive down there anyway. It comes right. to a, yeah. 
We did. Yeah. Yeah. Other than the fact that in our obs my you know, observation of it, uh, I hope they're not going to run into too many problems with the wetlands. Because mm -hmm. it looks like an awful lot of wetland growth down in there. What's happening with the Ryan Building? Anybody know? Yeah. Throw it. <laughs> That's yours now? Yeah. Has it always been yours? Uh, Is that the last recent? year and a half. Oh, okay. Um, we saw the tenant in the back. Why don't you sell that to Paula? She won't need a curb cut. <laughs> <laughs> or DOT. Yeah, don't you part of the price? We're keeping right our fingers crossed on the DOT right now, otherwise the check gets right out. Everything has a price. <laughs> Just oh, think yeah. how much business this is going to bring into town. Yep. Yeah. Uh, local stores, restaurants. Restaurants. Yeah. 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 I, I think hotels. it's going to have some. I got to think too about right. DOTs. A little bit of this traffic uh, issue. But yeah, I have a little. It, uh, you know, I'm curious about that convergence area <coughs> coming down the hill into Agway, right, right there at Bitterman. Yeah. I know that. Where be, it uh, uh, gets kind of nasty at times. Otherwise, traffic going east doesn't seem to be an issue at all. But it's it's not constant. It's like a half right. hour before yeah. game time, half hour after. Exactly. Game time. Most of the games for that is after business. You know, when you get the yeah. less traffic book, except for weekend. You know, we what, we know what the farmers market does um, when we can. That's so concentrated, though. Yeah, it's it like is. Very, Believe it or not, I stay away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't you know, we want to avoid a situation so where we're going to have to have a yeah. police park at Lowe's and walk down. Like you guys yeah. do. I do. Well, if if I want to go to farm, I park at Lowe's and I walk down. If a guy knows that they've got a game at noontime, he's <laughs> not going to get there 10 minutes before. Pizza. After the first time he's been there, you know, I see it in both. You know, people, hey, you know, you better allow for traffic. And 3A and Bo is crazy at times, too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so this facility and Bo and some of the other local facilities such as this can all work together and say, well, we're booked on this day, why don't you call? Right. Actually, you met with traveling teams and yeah, she, yeah, there's, there's she met a, with the other facility on Saturday yeah. and there seems to be a lot of synergies uh, between the organizations, uh, uh, Bob targeting some of the smaller kids leagues, but this gives them a place to grow to and I right. think there can be a lot of positive give and take for the They'll grow out of Bob's facility because they feel this small. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not. It's, it's not an either or, which is the nice thing about it. The nice thing is that too that you're you've got something here in a facility that can be used year round. You know, mm -hmm. normally in the winter it's ice skating or skiing. And that's it. You're limited to it. this can just keep right on going. Yeah. You know, looking at it, the, the demand should certainly be there. And you know, as uh, these guys are saying anecdotally, there are a lot of people who travel from the North Country down into Bo. I've mm -hmm. got. I've got friends in the Plymouth area that go to Seacoast United an hour and a half each way. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. For seven well, a.m. games for their kids. I mean, wow, a that's lot amazing, isn't it? Driving. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of dedication. A lot of dedication. Yeah. 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 So, so it's it's soccer. soccer is the number one growing sport in lacrosse. Right, right, right behind it, yeah. The nice thing about and both here. of these sports, yeah. too, is they're both male and female, almost equal participation. And they're both very inexpensive for people to participate in. It's about ten dollars per kid to play. Wow, that is a, that's that's. So a it's cheaper difference. than going to the movie, and they get an hour of running around time and some coaching and some leadership skills and team building skills. And with soccer, your your it only costs is a pair of shoes and a pair of shin guards. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Really Compared to hockey or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. Even yeah. lacrosse. Or football or something. I think you're right. a lot more than swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, with you. We can dredge out the pond for you. <laughs> 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 it's it's interesting because when I was stationed in England, they, yeah. they wanted, <clears throat> the kids over there all wanted to learn our softball games mm -hmm. and football. Mm -hmm. And I used to teach them, you know, coach them. And they just loved it over there. So it's almost like, you know, the roles Yeah, what you don't have, you want. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like the roles yeah. have been reversed. Yeah. All right, what do you got, sir? Okay, assuming that I give your motion to approve the special exception as requested for with the following conditions. Number one, construction to begin within three years of the final site plan approval. Okay. Not our approval, but site plan approval. Okay. And number two, compliance with any and all conditions associated with DOT approvals. Okay. Okay. Agree with that? I agree with that. Thank you very much. Thank you for that motion. You're ever so welcome. Everyone understand it? Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thanks, Karina. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?
got it. It's good. Thank you very Thank much. You. I appreciate Thank your time. Luck. I hope it works for you. Thank that you. was like a great thing. <coughs> At the very least, you could have to have make it into a Hampshire Hills type thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have to at least buy a hot tub to get, to get out of here. <laughs> oh, you could have those on the side. We're open once we set that yeah, I do. Good to see you again. Good. No, she retired from that and applied to for a job with Homeland Security. Yeah, she's out in uh, Yeah, I heard all. She went to school in Maryland. Uh, got accepted, and uh, she's a um, agricultural specialist. Did you know that guy? Working at uh, uh, Right now she's at Takati, California with Port of Entry down here. We're inspecting all of our vegetables that come across. Oh, yeah. No, with her? Oh, no. She never married. No, she's still available. <laughs> still looking, you know, Peter. <laughs> Uh, well, we got grandchildren, but not from her. No, she's, uh, she's just one of those girls that turned out to be more of a professional than a homemaker. Yeah. Not a bad thing. I'll nope. tell you, ask, I'll tell you, ask for it. Yes, that will make her happy. She was a Thanks again. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, all. Thank you all. Best of luck. Thank you. Did you get out of your hair? Did you have a study, too? Or did you keep it away? The traffic study, yeah. No, did you put it back in your file folder? Yes, he had a copy. Yes, he has a copy. I know where you are. Otherwise, it's not there. He works two doors down from me. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's how you know each other. Okay. Yeah, it's a visibility issue there. For one thing, they can't about that. Yes. Oh, he's very thorough. That's what we have now. Yes. He's awesome. I was just talking about him the other day. That's too weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> there he is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Good luck. Great to see you again, Roland. So, so Bye. Gus, Gus, no, she's on top of all stuff. Is she? What's that? What's that? Yeah, Roland and I talk. <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> Weekly, yes. Yeah. Planning board meeting. Right, guys. I see you've been right. avoiding oh. us. That, that's pretty good of you. We got there yet. We'll be, it closed already. So the next one will be the 24th of September. And it closes Take care. September 6th. Okay. But, um, uh, hopefully we can have something for that one. Yeah, okay. I can shoot you one of these. Is the camera off? Okay. Camera's, off. Camera's off. still on. I hope somebody edits it. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The, the second condition is DOT what? Compliance with any and all conditions associated with DOT approvals. Say that those are good. Okay, how long do I have to save them for? <laughs> Seven years. Forever and forever. Legal <laughs> <laughs> record. Yeah. We'll all sign our names to it. Okay, all them, right. Put them in with my IRS records. Okay, minutes. We're, we're almost done here, guys. Okay, we, we do need to review the minutes of uh, June 17th. And, uh, and get that out of the way, okay? Now, you've all got a copy of this, right? I didn't get any. You've never got I any? sent them in the mail, in a, via email. Oh, I never got them. Marina, did you send no, a copy? I don't know. You never got them? I gave it to you months ago. <laughs> well, then maybe that's one. <laughs> I email them to them. They don't open them. That's not right. Uh -huh. Oh, email, yeah. Yeah. Want to take a quick glance at it? I think it, everything is. <laughs> did you get a chance to review them, Joe, the draft? I did. Oh, I went over to a yeah. long time ago, I guess. Yeah, a long time ago. So yeah. did I. I could have. And I, as I recall, I didn't have any issues. We had a couple of minor corrections at that point. This isn't the only committee I'm on, you know. I know. I, I understand. So reason. sometimes with all these emails and phone yeah. calls and meetings. No, I'm not holding it against you. I'm right confused. Nobody's uh, admonishing you here for admonishing. Being a, being a bad There's girl. a ten dollar word for the day. Wow. Do you read the dictionary before you go to sleep? Every night. <laughs> I'm still in the A's. Oh, <laughs> I started in nineteen fifty two. You guys are embarrassing. <laughs> 
Sure. Oh, yes, here. the only people who laugh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Thank you. It, it is. Because we're beautiful people. Oh, my gosh. What did I do with my, my uh, ZBA thing from Jim Carpsey? Did you see it? Well, oh, this, this thing here. Is that what you're talking about? No. I've, I've no, oh, here it is. I just want to keep all my stuff together. Ah, get so much, so many piles. Well, Ooh. yeah, because I got a lot of folders out for him because I got those site plans. Like you need, you need some kind of a board in front of you. The ordinance here, the application here, That's notes a good idea. here. You know, wrap right around you like that. <laughs> There's another, another position for you. Maybe you should have a laptop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Judges First do. of all, you put them all on one screen. Judges do that, don't they? I think the town should buy you one. Oh, yeah. They, they, just ask, care. I'll get it for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you get a copy of this uh, town and city thing? Or? Yeah, same problem. You got one of theirs. Mm -hmm. Would anyone like this? Because if not, I'm going to take it home. If you don't want it, we could look at it for parts and rec. Yeah, there's a lot of neat stuff in these things. Because we're looking at a couple of new pieces of the... You guys don't get copies of it? I don't know if and this Captain happens Bob to be has a part that one. Rec recreation yeah. issue. What was the other? I, I don't recall seeing that one. Because we all look at them at each meeting. Yeah. I got one home. If you want to study yeah. it, if you take it home, there's going to be a quiz though when you come back. <laughs> oh man, she, she got rid of that like a hot potato, didn't she? <laughs> Are you finished reviewing the minutes yet? Yeah, they look wonderful. I, I give you a motion to uh, approve the minutes as Good. printed. And I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes of June 17th are accepted. Thank you all for, for not disqualifying yourselves tonight in any of these cases. Are we adjourned? Yes. Can I make a motion to adjourn? You don't have to. I, I was going to call for adjournment anyway. I make a motion. Very good. <laughs> second, move, move, second, yes. second. <laughs> That's I mean, you do it. Seven thirty p.m. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's it. Okay. Oh, it's a, a new word. Wait a minute.